What's going on guys, Gums here back again on a, another MLB The Show 20 Diamond Dynasty video. About a week ago, I dropped a video that was titled 10 Tips Every Diamond Dynasty Player Needs to Know. That was more so about getting cards and stuff that you do within actual Diamond Dynasty. Today we're going to do top 10 tips that you have to know gameplay wise. Now, a lot of these are tips and tricks, things that you're able to do that's going to give you that slight competitive edge that is going to help you out and win some more games. These are all things that I learned through countless hours and days and months of playtime within MLB The Show uh, from, you know, ever since I started playing this game. Before we hop into this one, make sure to leave a like down below, as always, really does help out the channel, and subscribe. We're going to hit 27,000 tonight. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, uh, we have just been going crazy gonna have a lot more great videos coming soon so make sure hit that sub button and always be alerted for whenever I post new videos uh, the first couple things I already went ahead and found some clips for because uh, they would have been hard to show you as time goes uh, like in because they would have been hard to show you guys because they would have been hard to show you guys live. So I'm just going to play some clips and I'm going to commentate over them. And the first tip that we're going to be talking about is something I mentioned last year in my similar video to this, and that is tagging up. I think this is such a crucial tip that everybody really needs to know. If you did not know, you are actually able to tag up a little bit early and get a slight edge that really can make the difference on those sacrifice flies. So this clip in particular, we're going to be going as soon as he catches the ball that's when we're going to press the uh, x button we individually run home this is brandon Lau, and as you can see as soon as he catches the ball that is when we're hitting the button notice he's not leaving the base right away he has already caught the ball and it is a delayed reaction it takes a little bit until the runner actually takes off for home plate so that is not as good as it could be and i'm about to show you why because in this clip we're going to show you how you can leave a little bit early and i get to show you when you want to leave so this time we have yandy diaz over on third base it's going to be a fly ball hit to center field cody ballinger and as you'll notice we're going to start taking off before he catches the ball but we don't leave the base until he's actually caught the baseball so as you can see this is only maybe a second if that but that is very very crucial and as you can see it was an errant throw anyway but that is really going to make the difference to make that extra step and then in this video right here i'm going to give you a more in-depth analysis of when you're going to want to go so this is the same clip of uh yandy diaz being on third base and as you can see you're going to want to hit the x button or advance Pretty much as soon as you see the glove come up uh, from Cody Ballinger in center field, or actually this is a different clip, uh, but we are leaving early as you can see with Mookie Betts. And as soon as the center fielder, I believe that's Kiermaier, moves his glove up, that is when you're going to move uh, your left analog stick to third base and hit X, and that is going to give you that little extra step in technically leave when you're supposed to because otherwise it is a delayed reaction, so make sure and do this. My next tip is going to be about pitcher batting a Diamond Dynasty because I think a lot of people squander this opportunity. You do not want to be swinging at pitches with your pitcher. If that does not make sense, this is why, because you're making their pitcher work. There's no point for you to go up there with your pitcher, swing at the first pitch, and it's a little pop fly. He had to do absolutely no work. Wait until at least there's two strikes until you even consider swinging the bat. Of course, this is a new point if you have Brendan McKay or Shohei Otani, somebody like that. Blake Snell has no hitting stats. And then what you're going to want to do from then on, still be very patient. Uh, try not to strike out because that is going to give them a confidence boost and that's going to help them out in the long run despite the fact that you are taking stamina but i recommend use the contact swing and keep trying to foul off pitches sometimes being late is actually beneficial to you and that's going to help you stay alive in counts all we're looking to do is make them throw a bunch of pitches and who knows i have drawn walks with pitchers before because i do this strategy i be patient i don't consider swinging 
swinging until two strikes you're just gonna make them drain stamina and especially if they have a really good pitcher like a Corey Kluber who's running on fumes this is gonna get him out of the game a little bit quicker next up I want to talk about throw canceling and button accuracy those two have a really nice combination uh, and you'll see in this clip right here I'm going to accidentally hit an R uh, hit a red with my throw and I didn't have canceling on or I did not hit it you can cancel that throw so you do not have to make it this year it is a lot harder to hit your button accuracy so there is ways to counteract it and help you out in this case right here same play pretty much second baseman's going over and I hit a red throw but if you hit L1 that's going to cancel your throw this is an option a setting that you have to tick on within the settings so make sure and do this this is going to be very very helpful and one more time this is going to be from an outfielder's point of view if you try to preload throws which means you're hitting the button before you even catch the ball which you always should do and if you get a yellow or a red throw you have to pick a different base because this year you have to stick with whatever result you get for that base so once again in this clip that was i think second base that i was trying to throw to originally and i got a yellow throw i don't want to keep that so if i decide to throw to the cutoff man or the third baseman i have another shot and actually i was trying to throw to third and i ended up throwing to second but make sure turn your throw canceling on all you have to do is hit l1 and it's going to save you from a lot of errors Lock-ons have been an issue for a lot of people once again this year. Here's a way to counteract that. You're going to want to take better routes and move. Here, we're going to take an end-around route. A lot of times, that's Austin Meadows. He does not have good defense. If I were to uh, pretty much go straight up, a lot of times he misses that ball. That is a notorious animation that you'll get a lot. Learn to take better routes to the ball and go inside or go uh, around it and then come back on. On it that is going to get you a lot better animations and you're not gonna have as much trouble locking on I know for sure it's happened to me a ton of times this year where I just won't get a lock on animation they did fix it a bit in the patch it does it does still happen sometimes and just move just kind of keep moving around until you do get locked into an animation obviously don't do drastic movements if you're already completely under a ball here's another example I'm gonna show you but if it's a pop-up just move around slightly move your left analog stick i think we kind of do it right here yep and we come back on the ball make sure we get a lock on and it's not going to give us some kind of bs animation and one of our last pre-recorded clips this is going to be about bunting so uh, perfect bunt situation runner on first base nobody out we have our pitcher go into your settings and turn on directional hitting i recommend doing this whenever you're going to sacrifice bunt because with directional you can kind of put it where you want to go as long as you move your left analog stick to where you'd like it to be once again be patient on your bunts if it's a ball do not swing once again same thing applies you want to work counts with pitchers it is still just as important Another thing I want to mention with this is you can see it's a perfect bunt and it, you'll know where you want to put it. For example, right here you can see the third baseman is covering inside so I don't want to bunt over to third base. The first base is the right option that I want to go towards and it is going to pretty much secure a better bunt. If you have the PCI hitting, it's not going to be... I don't really know even what that's driven by. I think that is kind of RNG but you can put this where you would like it to go and it's just going to guarantee you a much better bunt and it's going to really help you out in these small ball situations you don't have to feel like you need to swing the bat with your pitcher just because bunting doesn't work use directional it's five seconds to go into your settings and turn it on want to talk rundowns for a sec as you can see right here we make one throw to first one throw back to second then we chase him to first now this is always going to be the best thing you want to do you never want to chase them towards the base that they would advance to so if he originated at first base you want to chase him back there this is where throw canceling once again is going to be very helpful because you can pretend to throw over back to first and you can cancel the throw nine times out of ten they're caught in a pickle they usually don't know what to do and they're going to try to head back towards second base you're going to tag them out don't make it into a throwing match 
This is going to be talking about mixing rhythms. If you guys watch my gameplays, you'll know this is something I fancy quite often. I really like to do it because it's effective and it really works for me. What do I mean by that is we'll say I have a runner on base, which means my pitcher is guaranteed to be pitching out of the stretch. If you have a reliever that has just a simple stretch when nobody's on base, you can use that as well. But this is only going to be utilized when you know you are pitching out of the stretch. So what I mean by this is I'll often be pitching and I want to get them down to about two strikes. It's on repeat play. So just uh, kind of pretend that there's two strikes right now. And what I like to do is oftentimes throw an off speed pitch, but I do a slide step. This is very effective. That kind of glitched out right there. So it really uh, kind of messed up my timing. But what this is, does is especially if they have a speedy runner on first base and there's nobody out, one person out. If I do a slide step, they're almost guaranteed expecting that it's going to be a fastball. And the fact that it is a slide step, which is a faster animation, it is going to completely throw off their timing. I think that this is going to be much better utilized against the not as good players. I don't think uh, Pitching Rebel is exactly going to be... Uh, fooled by this i don't think he's going to be sitting back in his chair like what the hell just happened uh but if you are on the lower difficulties i am right around the 600 700 range and this is still working for me so uh if you do that get down to two strikes but if you do use this more than once at a game don't always throw the same pitch if i were to do the mixing rhythms two to three times at a game and i always throw a change up that completely ruins the element of surprise. So use this in tandem with regularly pitching out of the stretch. Use the fastball and then go off speed with mixing rhythms with a slide step. If you are not, make sure that you utilize this screen right here. All you have to do is press down on the right analog stick or R3, and it's going to give you a complete layout on the defensive alignment for your opponent. It's going to tell you the fielding of everybody, the arm strength reaction, and arm accuracy. Specifically, we're going to look for the fielding and the arm strength. Uh, the arm strength, for example, we have a runner on third base. If I'm considering to uh, try to hit a fly ball. So I'm going to purposely be under this and in a utopian society that would have been hit in fair territory and it would have showcased much better than now but i'll try it once more and we still didn't hit a fly ball but you get what i'm saying i can see that in left field he only has 49 arm strength so maybe i want to try to lift the ball get under it and push it over to left field by being late so i'm going to force a really low arm strength guy to try to make a throw and get me out on trying to tag up on on a sacrifice fly i see in center field and right field they pretty much have maxed out arm strength so you don't want to do it then and talking about fielding this is when you can kind of go bully ball barbecue chicken i do this all the time if somebody has charlie blackman i make sure i try to hit it out to right field or wherever he is because i know he's going to get bad reactions and i know that he does not get good animations so if you can have a choice between hitting at somebody with 40 fielding and 40 reaction or 80 fielding and 80 reaction, which one are you going to pick? I want to talk about this because it's brand new with your PCI this year. If you were ever curious what those three dots mean, the top dot is your power dot, the middle is a line drive, and the bottom is a ground ball. So you can see it's going to depend on what kind of hitter you have. I have Mike Zunino right now. He is not very good contact hitter wise, but he does have more power. Power, which means I'm trying to put that top dot or that top line depending on whatever your PCI looks like onto the baseball because that is his archetype if I have the bottom that's going to be a ground ball and since he doesn't have good contact I'm likely not going to get that good of results that's how the hitting system works this year so a good way that you can kind of do this in a way of forcing what you want to have so if i want to hit for power with mike zunino i might be starting my pci a bit lower because if they threw me a pitch down the middle i'm going to be a lot closer to that top dot than the bottom and i was completely off on that swing right there but you guys get what i mean and i'll show you an example with kevin kiermeyer again uh he's not a power hitter he's more of a contact guy as the dots would represent so this time i might want to start higher out and work myself downwards if that does make sense 
And finally, the last tip I want to give you, and I reiterate because I kind of covered this in my Diamond Dynasty 10 tips, but I don't see nearly enough people utilizing this, is that you can bring starters out of your bullpen. This is such a missed opportunity, in my opinion, that a lot of people aren't doing because I see so many people are just not taking advantage of it. If you guys play ranked seasons, you know energy recoups for starters uh, pretty fast. If you were to play four complete nine inning games and if you don't use any of those starters after their start, they are going to be the first guy that you used in the first game is going to be ready to go in the fifth game you really don't need a five-man rotation so you'd almost be better off using one of these as a long reliever you can either dedicate that to one specific person or you can uh, kind of mix and match but make sure in do this because otherwise you are just kind of wasting that spot unless you actually start him because energy really works to your advantage so if you have a back end guy like a Tom Glavin this is probably uh for me one of my he would be one of my best relievers certainly one of my best lefty relievers so this is going to be another way that you guys can get some pretty cheap uh first of all probably the best long relievers that you're going to find in the game you know you have Charlie Morton and then whatever starter you want to get and this is going to be a cheap way to find some of the best relievers when they kind of are price fixed currently and that is going to do it for this video 10 game play tips that you guys need to know hopefully these really do help you out in specific i think the tagging up one is so so vital i cannot tell you how many times i have just barely by a hair gotten in there and it's all because i got to go when i was supposed to go it wasn't a delayed reaction if you guys have any other gameplay tips make sure to leave them down below in the comment section to help out the community as well if i think of some more i might come back with the part two with this video but if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. There goes some Saudi. Yikes.